The Entrepreneur's Library, episode 174. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Library, the only book-centric podcast that reviews all the top-selling business books and shares authors' perspective firsthand. This is your resource to finding the next great book that will enable you to grow personally and professionally. Welcome your host, Wade Danielson. Welcome back to the EL. Today we have Philip Beyer, author of System Busters, How to Stop Them in Your Business. Welcome, Philip, and thank you for joining us on the Entrepreneur's Library. Thank you, Wade. Absolutely. Before we take a deep dive into your book, System Busters, will you take just a moment to introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about you personally? Absolutely. Well, I'm Philip Beyer. I was born and raised in Louisiana, and I moved to Nashville, Tennessee in 1981. I've been self-employed since the age of 24. I'm the owner and president of two Nashville-based businesses, a commercial printing company called Buyer Printing, in a software company that has a lead product, which is a cloud-based uh, BPM business process management software called System 100. I'm also a regular blogger for PI World, and our blog is called Systemic Success. I'm the father of three grown sons who work with me in our companies. I'm the husband of a beautiful wife who is my editor-in-chief of our blogs, our website content, and of course, this book, System Busters. Very good. Well, thank you for sharing that. Now let's jump right into that book that you just mentioned, System Busters, How to Stop Them in Your Business, which was made available originally back in 2007. And Philip, we're going to move quickly, but our whole goal here today is really take the time to to let our future reader and the listener know exactly what they can get out of your book. And we've done that through a, a couple of simple questions. And the first one is, what was the inspiration behind writing System Busters? Well, you know, I, I said I started buyer printing in 1988, and after five years of steady growth, I, find my, I found myself in chaos, working long hours, bogged down in day, daily operations, no time for personal life. I just had a very tough job. So why does someone start a buyer business? Well, they're hoping for financial freedom, and along with the financial freedom, secondly, they're dreaming of doing the thing they've always wanted to do but never could find the time. Uh, but many owners never get to that second part. And that's where I fi- found myself making good money, but not having free time I wanted, but an answer came. A friend gave me a book to read about um, a great business book, uh, um, how a, a company looks and functions when good business systems are in place. So I started reading everything I could get myself uh, hands on, Uh, Total quality management, ISO, Six Sigma, continual improvement, et cetera. And I started applying these written systems to our business and to our operations. And I saw immediate results and improvements. Our errors went down from like 7% to less than 1%. Then we started even growing faster because I had more time to devote to sales and marketing due to our new systems. Our customers and vendors took notice of the cleanliness and organization of our business. They started inviting me to help them with their business and started asking me to write a book. That journey was my inspiration uh, to write the book and to tell others. Very good. Uh, Entrepreneurs are inundated with books every single day that come out that, that can help them move forward. So let's take some time to differentiate yours from the rest that are out there. So what makes your book different from others regarding the same or similar topic? Well, I'll say there's a lot of consultants and theories on business systems out there. But I actually built and applied business systems from the ground up, measuring their results and sustaining them for over 20 years. I did it. This book shares how we did it step-by-step in simple terms using true stories as examples. Now, after reading our book, I believe anyone can systemize and bring order to their business so they don't have to constantly be on site in order for their business to grow and prosper. And isn't that what we're all looking for as entrepreneurs and business owners? It was a real life changer, and it was, uh, you know, it was for me. It could be for anybody. So, Phil, this next question is a little bit interesting because we're asking you how you would recommend the reader engage with your book. And really what we mean by that is, is this a book that they can jump in and out of, basically grabbing or cherry-picking information as needed? Or did you really design it or write it to be read from front to back? Well, I'll just say either or. 
But even if I said start at the beginning, most entrepreneurs, as you know, are scanners. Uh, but they may miss a fine nugget if they jump around. Uh, for me, I'm now a system guy, and I like to do things step by step, but I would say either or. Okay, excellent. And so, Philip, now that we know a little bit of the, the background, the purpose of the book, let's take a deep dive into the content itself. So will you take the next five to eight minutes and really give uh, the listener, the future reader, a great idea of what they can obtain from your book? Okay. Well, Wade, first I want to thank you for this opportunity to share our book with your audience. Um, now, you're going to hear the word system a lot, but please stay with me. Uh, if this book was about dogs, I'm sure the word dog would come up quite often. Again, please bear with me. Now, before I get re really started here, I'd like to say there again, there's a lot of books, blogs, and podcasts out there on sales, 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 and people say nothing happens without sales. Well, that's true. But without good systems, you may be bringing customers through the front door, and they're leaving out the back door due to poor quality and service. And that's detrimental to the growth. That's why some companies never grow past a certain point. Let me give you an example. Call your cable company support line and see how long they would leave you on hold. Then turn around and call the sales line. I bet they answer within a few rings. Now, that tells you everything you need to know about the priority of a company. Now, I believe quality and service should play an equal part with sales but you need systems. So let's get started. Chapters one, two, and three is where do you start making the decision to systemize your business, the why, and beginning the mission. The Small Business Administration says over 50% of businesses fail the first, uh, in the first year, and 95% of those who make it past the first year fail in the first five years. And the reason they fail is not for lack of sales. It's due to burnout and mismanagement due to poor business systems. And that's where I found myself around year five after starting my business. I was troubled with chaos. I was losing money due to wasted time and resources. I was stressed over recurring mistakes. Uh, I had missed deadline, was causing me panic. Working long hours, training and retraining personnel. I was overworked. I had no time for a personal life. I was frustrated keeping my business clean and orderly. I had constant interruptions with the same questions. I tell a story in the book about the day in the life of a business owner. I had people who, after reading that story, said that, Philip, you must have been living under my desk. It was like we were telling their story of how their business looked on a day-to-day -day basis. Also, I share in this first chapter uh, my epiphany on systemizing my business, my decision-making process, my commitment to change, and to do whatever it takes to bring my business to order. I go into detail how that journey began and what set me on that path. I talk about the obstacles and the pitfalls to look for, people to avoid. Okay, chapters four and five. Writing it down, working on your business, not in your business. Now, you've heard this a thousand times. But you know what? This is true. As you know, most business owners don't have a degree in business, much less have been schooled on business process management. Most business owners carry around in their heads how their business operates from the time they come in in the morning until they leave. They need to download, as one guy said, do a brain dump into written systems of how the business operates. Now, this is key if you want to achieve the second part I talked about earlier, having that dream of doing the things you've always wanted to do and not having to be on site daily. Most business owners are afraid to leave their office. Why? Because they fear things will fall apart in their absence. They say, well, people don't do things like I would do them. Well, then write it down, how, how you would do it, step by step. Only have to write it down once. You know, Edward Deming, of the Fame Deming Award said, if you can't describe what you're doing as a process, then you don't know what you're doing. I tell the story how one system weight I implemented freed up around six hours a day for me. That's when things really started to roll. Our business began to flourish. 
It took around 90 days to write and implement that system, but it changed my life. Chapter 6 and 7. What are systems, and if not systems, what? Why be committed to systems? I talk about how they intersect and integrate. I talk about the mindset of the anti-system solution. What most businesses use in place of good system. That cost, the 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 effect it has on the customers, employees, vendors, and their families. You know, I recently attended a mergers and acquisition seminar, and the speaker said, the day you start a business is the day you should start preparing your exit strategy. Having good business system greatly affects the price you get when selling a business. People are not wanting to buy a job. They want a business. They want to buy a business that runs without the owner having to be on site. That's valuable. Okay, chapter nine, how to build systems and your operations manual. Where do you start? When to build or not to build a system. Stories on how building systems transformed our company and my life. The building blocks of a system. Step-by-step process of building a system and how it interacts with other processes and people in the company. How to how to put your operations manual together, and I talk about document management, which is very key. All right, chapters 10 through 14, types of system that empower employees, give people the tools they need to do a job as you would like it done as the business owner. I show how to build various type of checklist systems, daily routines, quality and service controls, et cetera orientation systems, and many other HR systems. You know, many owners don't even know exactly what their employees are doing each day or their true workload. How many owners lose a lot of valuable information when an employee walks out the door that's been there for years? They may have been running a department or even a general manager. How much time is lost retraining someone new? If their position was well documented in writing, a new, a new person could be done, could be trained in a matter of days, not months. You know, I wrote a good blog on PI World called When Systems Walk Out the Door. All right. Continuing in those chapters, systems that follow up and measure improvement. People will say they put in systems, and then people stop using them. Well, to keep a a system running, you must have a follow-up system to ensure it keeps working. Because if you don't track and measure results, you don't know if the system even works. Sales and marketing systems, how to build them, and true stories about their success. I talk about how to implement, implement automatic marketing using the power of systems from your operations manual. The system of cleaning, this was a a real eye-opener for me. Many businesses are cluttered. People's desks look like someone uh, dumped a trash can on them. And my desk used to look like that until I discovered There's a way to keep your desk department and the entire company clutter-free. And I go into great depths how to make that work. This is a great chapter. (laughs) It's a must-read for slobs. (laughs) production or service scheduling systems what systems need to be in place to ensure service and production is happening on time every time avoiding the pitfalls and how to overcome them chapter 15 system 100 well that's our software I had just one page uh, talking about how this journey led me to build software to automate what is normally manual systems in a company. And after developing this software for our company, word got out about it, and that started a whole other career and business for me. Without systemizing my company, I would have never had the time to do that. With our software, now we can help other companies systemize, systemize in a matter of month, not years. Chapter 16 through 18, encountering opposition from employees, how to deal with it, and I use real 
true stories. The land of chaos. I talk about not going back to the land of chaos, especially once you started that journey. You know, there's a, there's a price to pay, but the journey and the payoff is well worth it. The buck stops here. This is about being involved as the owner, as the head of the business, until all systems are in place, up and running. And not to de delegate your vision to someone else until you've completed the mission. Now, when it's completed, it's celebration time. It's time to buy a farm in the country. Restore your, your old car. Take an exotic vacation you dreamed about. Or write a book. Start another career. Chapters 20. I get into TQM, that's uh, Total Quality Management and ISO Systems, and I explain what they are and how not to be intimidated by them, but to embrace them. And as your company grows, you will probably want to do business with companies that have implemented ISO. So you need to be ready. You need to be systemized. I tell a story in our book how our company was audited by Nintendo which is an ISO company. All right, chapter 21. This is closing the circle, and I recap how all these systems come together step by step. And that's it. Excellent. So you went through a ton of phenomenal information, Philip, and that's what I think makes this next question a little bit difficult. And that I'm asking you then to, you know, put it even, I guess, further or smaller into a nutshell, and that's if the reader can only take away one concept, principle, or action item, out of your entire book and everything you just took the time to discuss with us, what would you want that to be? Well, like I said before, if you ever want to get away from day-to-day -day operations and you want to own the business, not just have a job, you need a written operations manual for the business. Again, I might have to say the word, systems, systems, systems. Mm. And Philip, there's already been some quote-worthy things that you've said throughout there, even in that last that last response to that question. But do you have a favorite quote from your book? And will you take a second to uh, to break down what it means to you? Okay. Yeah. Back to the system. A great system is a great tool to help people do a great job. Notice I didn't say great people do a great job. Just people do a great job. See, on a scale of 1 to 10, with a good system a person you may now rate as a five can become an eight or a nine. So Philip, we'll have that in our show notes. So people can go back and, and reflect on that a little bit more uh, at the, at the EL podcast.com. Philip, my last question for you today as a book centric podcast, we got to ask you for a book recommendation. And that's if there's only one book you could recommend based on the way that it's changed your life, really created a paradigm or a lifestyle shift. What, uh, what book would you suggest? Well, you you know, I alluded to the um, book earlier a friend gave me that really started this whole mission. And that's where I got an epiphany. I read The E-Myth in 1990, I think it was 1993, 94. And uh, although uh, Gerber uh, didn't tell you step by step how to systemize your company and how to put all this in place, he did lay out that he did lay out a vision, but by reading that book, I realized that you know what I could fix the system busting things that were going on in our company, and I could I could gain control over my business. I could have a life again. Mm -hmm. So I would say the E Myth, but then you need the How To book, and that's when I would say read System Busters: How to Stop Them in Your Business. Perfect. I'm, I'm glad that you put that in there. They can kind of do the one-two punch with both of those. Right. So, Philip, before we depart, can you recommend the best way for our listeners to, to be able to get more information on you and your book, System Busters? Right. Um, go up to uh, system100.com, and that's uh, the number 100, system100.com, and we have all the contact information. There's um, a lot of great videos that I've put together called Philip Busters. Um, um, about the tour of lean management, just a lot of good videos and a lot of our blogs and articles free for download. And the book can be found uh, on Amazon uh, in paperback. Uh, of course, we have the audio version on Audible and iTunes and the Kindle version, all on Amazon. 
Perfect. Well, Philip, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your book with us. Well, thank you for having me, Wade. Thanks again for listening in today. If you'd like more information on Philip or his book, System Busters, check out the show notes at the elpodcast.com. And if you'd like an opportunity to win Philip's book, visit the elpodcast.com and become a VIP. Looking for your next book idea? Head over to the elpodcast.com, where Wade shares his amazing resource, the top 10 business books recommended by over 500 entrepreneurs with you for free. That's the elpodcast.com. Till the next time, keep it on the EL.